Next question is from Jason Miller, 56. Is there a difference in training cardio for cardiovascular health versus training to increase VO2 max? What's the best way to train for overall cardiovascular health? Y yes, there is, but there's a lot of crossover. It's like a Venn diagram. So in the middle is health. And on one end is just health or one of them's health. One of them is uh, performance. And in the middle is like longevity health, right? If you push VO2 max at some point, you start to sacrifice health for VO2 max. So in the beginning, any kind of cardio increases your VO2 max. Right. You take a, somebody who doesn't do cardio, you get them on an elliptical, they're going to get a boost in VO2 max. But at some point, when you're trying to push VO2 max and you're trying to really push performance, this is true for strength, by the way. This is true for any physical uh, endeavor. Once you go past a certain point, you start to trade longevity and health for performance. So like you look at top power lifters, yeah. they're not as healthy as someone who does strength training just for health, right? But at some point when they started, they were just getting health benefits, but then they passed that to go for extreme strength. Same thing with VO2 max. If you look at like the top, top, top VO2 max you know, athletes like top marathon runners or super distance runners, they don't have the best longevity because they're pushing their bodies too hard. But in the beginning of training, you get both. So now that I've said that, what's the difference between the two? Cardiovascular health, you want to train consistently and you want to maintain a decent cardiovascular system. So at some point, you're not trying to push your, your, your times. You're not trying to go crazy with your performance. You're just doing it for enjoyment. You're doing it for consistency and you're doing it to feel good. So I would say that's the big difference. Well, it really depends on what your desired outcome is. Like, what are you trying to gain from it? Because how you're, what you're trying to gain from your cardiovascular training would dictate how I would have you do it, right? I mean, it's almost like asking the same thing. Like, what is, uh, what's the best way to, uh, to lift weights? Yeah. It's like, well, I mean, it depends. It depends on- It's a pretty general, broad uh, topic. Yeah. yeah. What's it like, or be more specific, like they said, what's the best way to lift weights for health? What's the best way for cardio for health? Well, I mean, there's a lot of health benefits to different types of cardio modalities. I well, mean, that's just it. There's a lot of different versions. Like it's not just, you know, running and jogging and everything, you know, straight ahead. Like yeah. you can do all kinds of cardiovascular training in multiple planes and explosively. And, you know, there's just, a, but that requires a complete, different skill set that you need to acquire and totally learn. do you do you want to have increased uh, endurance and stamina do you want to be able to uh, run for an hour straight and be okay doing that do you want to have more explosive uh, uh cardiovascular endurance, where something in, in shorter durations but you can push higher which would be like vo2 max stuff like so it really depends on uh, and each have their benefits. It's nice to have a little blend of both, but I mean it, it's tough to answer a question like that. And then it also depends on where you're where you're currently at and what you're trying to achieve outside of that, as far as building muscle and things like that. Because you could tell me that um, Adam, I want to be good at you know cardiovascular endurance. I want to be able to run for an hour or two hours. But then you also go and I'm really trying to build 15 to 20 pounds of muscle right now. I was like, okay, well. Those are very challenging to do at the same time. Um, maybe we focus on one more than the other. And so th this is a bit of a depends question uh, for the, the person that's that's asking. Yeah, well, that all being said, I'll make a general, uh, I guess, piece of advice around this, or, or, or I'll give a general answer I think is true for most people. If you look at the whole context of the thing, so longevity and you factor in risk of injury, you factor in the technical skill involved, right? Because running is a highly technical type of movement that most of us can no longer do well because we stop running when we're 12. Mm. Um, so if you factor all of that in uh, an availability and consistency, like the likelihood someone's going to stay consistent, the likelihood that they'll have access to this particular type of movement as they get older, if you factor all of that in, then walking has to be the, the, the winner. Mm -hmm. because it's still something we can all do. We're not in Wally world yet. I'm sure we'll get there soon, but for now, everybody could still walk. It's very accessible to people. You just walk. You can go outside and walk. You can walk on a treadmill. You can walk anywhere. So it doesn't require lots of stuff. The risk of injury is low as a result. And for longevity, I mean, daily walking, if you're walking a decent amount every single day, you're going to reap tremendous health benefits over time. Now, you're not going to be a phenomenal runner or athlete by doing this. But if it's just for health, with all those things that I said, it's hard to beat walking, it really is.